Hi, this is Frank with Motor and TV, and uh, we're pretty lucky today. We're here with uh, Tim Bonnell and Rick Knuckles, and uh, they've got a couple of interesting cars, I would say the least. Uh, Tim, why don't you tell us a little bit about your car that you have, or the one green car that we're looking okay, at. Okay, it's a 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda. It was one of about 680 uh, 70 Hemi Cudas built, and one of about 284 uh, four speeds. And uh, it, uh, I've had it since 97, and uh, of course I was always interested in the Barracuda, Cuda from 1970, right. having purchased a Barracuda new, which I still have. Uh, but this one I was able to acquire in uh, 97, and it was funny, uh, I was told about it at a car show, as somebody had seen it in the Wichita Eagle advertised, and it was a 913 area code, so I went to see the car, did some research on it, found out it was a genuine Hemi Cuda. All right. And uh, after about a week or so, we made a deal and I went up and picked it up. Right here in beautiful Kansas. Yeah, Concordia, Kansas. And uh, the only thing about it at the time, it, it didn't have the original block with it, which a lot of the muscle cars didn't because, you know, right. the, young by, people by were hard on them. By 97, it would have been probably drone hard or driven hard and put away wet. Right. <laughs> but everything else was there. Yeah. Um, Tell us about the engine, you know, how did you come about knowing that it wasn't the right engine and then what did you do about it? Well, we did an inspection on it, looked at where the VIN numbers were and things and the guy was up front, told me it was a 65 block that was in it and it had been replaced probably in the late 70s is my mm -hmm. guess because mm -hmm. when the car came to Kansas, I don't think it was operating. Yeah, most of those big blocks like that didn't last too long yeah. <laughs> in the day. But uh, anyway, um, we, uh, I bought the car, it, it had had a, a, a rotisserie restoration on the, right, on the body, right. but the mechanicals weren't real good. So uh, Mike Steiner with Professional Refinishing in Winfield helped me bring the car up to standard and mm -hmm. uh, we, we went through the engine and ended up putting a, a restoration block in it at the time because the 65 block uh, in one of the uh, uh, journals had a crack in it and so just, just to be safe and sound, mm -hmm. I went ahead and put the restoration block in it. Uh, and so uh, it's been to a lot of the local car shows, it's been to some national shows like the All Chrysler Nationals in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Um, as luck would have it, uh, eBay uh, has worked miracles in, to, for many people and uh, in 2006 I got a message from eBay that another 426 Hemi block was up for sale. And when I, I went through the ad, I found out, uh, looking at it, they had the VIN number that was stamped in the block and a picture of it, and it was my VIN number. Mm -hmm. So I, I about fell out of my chair when I saw that, <laughs> and I thought, you know, what's the chances of this? And yeah. uh, so I, I had two choices, either bid high or, or try to contact the, <laughs> the seller. So I ended up contacting the seller, and he, he took it right off the, the market. He says, I'm going to sell it to you. We just got to arrive at a price. And uh, I, he wanted to, basically wanted a, a 426 crate engine, and uh, which uh, I would have been, it would have been cheaper just to make a high bid on it, I think. <laughs> but but anyway, we we ended up getting the block. It came it came to Wichita and uh, had Dwayne Som Som Engineering inspect it, right. and, and it was it was all, you know still a standard bore. Mm -hmm. It just had a new uh, main cap on it and uh, uh, number four. And so uh, I had Dwayne uh, take the original parts off the engine that was in the car, and put them with that new, with, with the original block, right. and uh, right. you know now it's back together. And where did it come from? Well, apparently when the car came to Kansas, the engine was not running, and a fellow in Lawrence bought it, and mm -hmm. he took the, uh, he put the '65 block in it. I talked to him, and uh, he took the original block and. Uh, apparently sold it to a drag racer in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, yeah. and there it sat on a shelf for many years until he started selling his stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I missed it the first time it was on eBay. It was sold to a gentleman in Canada. Really? Who was going to put it in a charger. And uh, he decided to get a crate engine instead. And so he put it on eBay, and that's when I saw it. And so um, it, it, it's nice to get it back together. Uh, it, well, it must have meant to be for yeah. Galen, far apart. But. Yeah, Galen Gauvier says having the original block back in, it gives it about a 10% value boost. So 
that you know, that's good. I would say every bit of that. Yeah, every bit of that. So, uh, you know, they're they're kind of a rare car, and it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. So, do you still drive the car, or is it just I, primarily I'm, a show car? It, it's a show car, but I, I do drive it on nice days, and I'll mm -hmm. take it out and run it. I don't take it to the drag strip or abuse mm -hmm. it or anything, but mm -hmm. I give it a good run, and okay. uh, she does roll well. That's well, great. Well. Rick, what can you tell us about your beautiful car? Well, you helped me get it. Oh, <laughs> that. We were at uh, Barrett Jackson and uh, watching the cars go through. And on the way back, we were coming back, and I think we were in somewhere in New Mexico, and it was at night. And I think the other two guys were asleep in the back. And and I looked at Frank and I said, "You know what? I think I'd like to get a Shelby." And I said, "Keep your eyes out for one." And so I didn't think much about it. And then uh, it was probably, what, two months later that you called me and said, I've got a Shelby for you if you want it. So we went it ahead. and in pristine shape, by the way. Then, uh, now, wait a minute. <laughs> then it, <laughs> pristine is way overvalued here. It was pristine. <laughs> when, 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 when you guys pulled up and that car showed up in just a shell and, and uh, the parts are all there, my wife looked at me and said, you really bought that? <laughs> and I said, no, and I said, and so I told her, I said, no, honey, you, you got to look past what it's going to be. And, and, uh, and as you can see, it's, it, it, it turned out pretty nice, but there's a lot, there's so much story and stories behind it and the history. But I, we went ahead and actually took that car to be painted in Florida. Right. which I remember that. a lot of people looked at me like, are you crazy? There's so many good painters are, and there are many good painters in Wichita in the area. It's that a good friend of ours, Steve Shepard, who mm -hmm. you guys know, mm -hmm. and Steve says, brought his boy up at Christmas, and he said, I'd really like to paint this car because he has a great body shop down there, and, and he's unbelievable how big he is now down there, and he's right outside Destin, Florida. So we thought, you know, that's kind of a fun trip. Let's go down there and and uh, right. go to Destin and right. see Kevin, and and uh, Kevin Shepard's the one that painted it. And so anyway, we took the car down there and then drove back, and then it took him a year to put it, a lot of it together, painted it, and on the way back, Frank, I'm telling you, it was, uh, it was crazy because we took turns every time we pulled in to get gas. It was an instant car show. It was crazy. We had one guy follow us for six miles on the highway, he said, because he wanted to hear it and see the car, and. And uh, so anyway, it's, it's, you know, I think that's a lot of what these cars are about, you know, yes. is having them. And, yes. mm -hmm. and even today, um, let people enjoy them. I mean, like driving any, any of your guys' cars, it doesn't have to be your own car, mm -hmm. but you just feel good driving down the road. Like today coming up here, I'm sitting there, you know, and people over there look good and they give you a thumbs up. And, you know, that's, that's kind of what this whole hobby's about, the fun yeah. of this. And, yeah, and, and so anyway... Um, so we had the car painted and, and uh, came back and got it put together and kind of a similar story to Tim. Um, a guy called me out of Canada once I registered on the Shelby registrar and he uh, says, I've got your transmission. And uh, of course... the same guy, was it? No, he's same <laughs> different, different Canada. <laughs> but this guy, you know, so right away, you know, I'm saying, oh, my God, he's going to hold me hostage. And, yeah, and I didn't even know if I had a transmission. Yeah. You guys delivered parts and parts. And, and it, a, there was a motor. The, the motor was there. But anyway, so we, we ended up. And I said, uh, I said, he says, uh, yeah, it's top loader and it's on the number and you're on there. Mm -hmm. So when it came on, he said, I want to get a hold of the owner and try to get it back together. Right, and I said, right. well. First of all, I thank you for that, and mm -hmm. and uh, because it is the right thing to do is to match the cars like sure. with Tim. So it's a similar story, and so after about three weeks of what I would call tough negotiations, we came up with a price, and and uh, and he shipped it to me, and and uh, so it's good to see with these classic old cars uh, that they they're put back together the way right. they. It's amazing the networking that actually goes on. The fact that here's a guy in Canada in both cases, uh, call you guys finding out that you've got the car and they've got the engine or they've yeah. got the transmission and you need it. <laughs> and you know, and, and in today's where the cars, in today's hobby, it seems to be going a lot to resto mods. I think that everybody agrees that these cars need to be just as they were coming mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. 
and antique people. And there's always going to be room for the original beautiful cars that are kind of special mm -hmm. and the cars that you can take and rest them on them because, you know, I learned something from, from the people today, the younger kids, that I like to have disc brakes and I like yeah. to have... Uh, I like to be able to stop once in a while. Yeah, you know what, because I, I, I can tell you, yeah. driving down the road when you're an old car, you're looking at the road, you're looking at the gas gauge, you look at the temperature gauge. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's one of those three yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but it, so we, uh, we got the car done and, and uh, um, it, it was shown at Blacktop Nationals is the only place it's ever been to. But uh, I plan on this year getting the car out a little bit and taking it out and, and uh, having some fun with it because you know, uh, it's a 67 Shelby GT500, and Carol, it was the last year that Carol made the Shelbys at the LAX airport is where his his uh, company was. And and so anyway, it's the last year that they, he made the dual quad cars. Right. And then in 68, they got together with Ford and they moved, uh, you know, the, the uh, putting them together up in Detroit. but. It's pretty fun, and, and one quick story about Shelby is he was talking about his, he was at the airport and he bought a building that obviously wasn't for putting cars together, and it had two stories, and he had one kind of a, had an elevator, but you couldn't put a full car in this elevator. And I was watching the story where somebody was talking to him about it, and he, they would have to put it in the elevator to finish the cars the way they wanted, they would jack the front up and it would pull the rear in so they could shut the door and they would take them up and then reverse it down. And somebody asked him about car number what so and so and he says, it's dropped in the elevator, <laughs> we had to remodel it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's kind of the cool story with, you know, Carol Shelby and, mm -hmm. and the fact that he took the Mustangs, the Mustangs came as just simple Mustangs without a hood and without a trunk because those are fiberglass. Yeah. And of course, he he dolled up the motor, and and it has a 428 police interceptor Cobra jet. Right. And so, of the 2048 that were made of the GT500 to 67, there was um, that's the color is night mist blue, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe there was about 161 of them all over the country, and and uh, the car kind of has a history of hanging around the desert southwest, and and so. Um, Supposedly, there's just in that area down in there. There was only about five of them, so there. You know, it's fun to it's fun to have something that's everybody in the world loves to have things, whether it's cars or jewelry, but things right. that are unique. Right, right, absolutely. Well, uh, there's something about that car that's kind of a mystery. Yeah, that's well. Once I got the car from from Frank, they ended up and the guy brought the car. And he sets all the parts down, and my wife's looking over there, you know, like I told you. And, mm -hmm. and I said, why is there white interior and black interior? Both. And they said, the guy says, oh, it's some rock star's car. But he says, I listen to country music. And I said, well, do you have any idea who it was? And he kind of looks down, he says, doors? And I said, Jim Morrison? And he says, yeah, supposedly it might be his car. And Without going into uh, making this a five-hour show, right. basically uh, there is a very large group of people around from Albuquerque is where this car came from that this group all have told me and talked mm -hmm. to all of them that it is in fact his car. However, some of the, you know, the Shelby people right. and some of the people of the know uh, have told me that it's not, but all I want to know is, is it or is it not? Because We've had so many things from this car. When we took it down to Kevin to have it painted down in Florida, mm -hmm. he showed me when the wreck of uh, where Morrison had a wreck and, and checked into that, well, lo and behold, it was exactly in all the same spots. Right. In fact, he right. told me, right. that's why I learned from him that he said, this car's been jumped. And then later there was a video showing Morrison doing a lot of jumps and things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what does that make it? Well. First of all, it, where the wreck was, um, it, it all kind of lined up, and then we found, not that it matters, but we found six 357 shells in the right front vent when we took the car apart. And, uh, and so we talked to Anthony Funches, who was his bodyguard, bodyguard and, right. and, uh, and they said possibly. Um, uh, there were times when we had guns <laughs> in the car, <laughs> and um. so... Anyway, but, <laughs> but you know, if you look at the video, I don't know if yeah. you have a Morrison driving right. out in the desert, 
But Tim and I and a friend, Earl Lauer, and uh, Steve Shepard were over there in, in the garage. Mm -hmm. And they pulled the radio out, turned it upside down, and fine desert sand came flowing out of that. We should have videoed that because yeah. there's so much circumstantial evidence of this. I just want to know, is it or is it not? But there's, there's a group, a lot of people that sure says, they told me. I mm -hmm. called the past owner and he was in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I called him up and I said, Dick, this is Rick Knuckles and I own a car that you used to own. And he says, I've been waiting on this call for 25 years. And I said, really? And he, and I didn't say a word. He says, you know, your car has prominence. And I said, I hear that. You tell me what you know, never mentioning what I knew. And he says, well, you own Jim Morrison's car. And we're certain, and there's a group of people that hear that do that. Right, right. Well, anyway, without going into it, um, I went down and visited with him and they wrote all the details out and it's sure a compelling case, but either way, it's, it's kind of fascinating, but I just would like to know, is it or isn't it? And you know. didn't you at one point get something in the mail from somebody? Yeah, we got to, uh, we ended up getting a, uh, not that it matters, but I did have it look, but if you look at the uh, Morrison albums where he's shirtless and he's got some beads around there, mm -hmm. so I had to find out, so I took it to two different people and I said, tell me, how old do you think these are? And he looks at them and he pulls it back and it has this black string in there and he says, late 60s probably. Mm -hmm. And I said, interesting, didn't tell him what it was, anything mm -hmm. like that, but what you're referring to, a little black uh, uh, Mustang Monthly had done a, a story about the car mm -hmm. and, and so whoever this was sent me a plastic, a plastic bag with this in it and it says to the new owner of Jim Morrison Shelby, congratulations, <laughs> this is a gift from Jim and I and enjoy and please hang it from your rear view mirror. Right. Which I never have, but. Right. And in that video that you see out in the desert, you see that hanging from the rear <laughs> That, view. yeah, and it's hanging from the rear view mirror and he was doing donuts and we yeah, got the yeah, yeah. dust in there and we got bullets and we got the, the, the wreck the way it was and the way, and I tried to have, and Kevin did too, to look at the, look at the, at the, uh, the damage to the car and he said it was brazen and that's exactly how they fixed things back, right, in, the, right. back in the late 60s. So. Right. Anyway, there's a lot more of that, but it's it's an interesting story. Well, one thing I will say that both of you guys are very lucky to have two beautiful cars. Oh, well, thanks. And you, Thank you. Yeah. you had a lot to do with, well, with I, one of them, the for only sure. The thing I had to do with it was uh, take the money and run. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to you about that. My <laughs> wife wants me to ask you about that. <laughs> well, it was great looking at the Hemi Cuda and also at the Shelby. Hey, this is Frank with Motor and TV. Thanks a lot. Make sure you subscribe and also like us.